Welcome back to Ride and Glide. Today, we are looking at Apollo's newest model to line. This hasn't been released yet, so this is a pre-production model, and it is the Apollo City. So this is a new urban sort of commuter type scooter that they've developed. Um, they've developed it by listening to their customers. So they put these huge polls out, asked them loads of questions, got thousands of responses, and they've put all of that information, or as much as they, as they can, into this scooter. Now, as you may know, Apollo already have a scooter called the City, or a model called the City. That was an OEM model, so it was the sim uh, same as the 09, obviously the Apollo City, and a few other makes as well use the same model and just put different branding on it. This is Apollo's very own design. So there is no one else that will have this model of scooter. They have built it from the ground up. So let's take a look at some of the new features. Okay, so first things first, let's look at the scooter itself. Completely different to the older version of the City. This is striking, it really is. When we first got it out of the box, opened it up, built it, you can see that a lot of effort has gone into the design of this scooter. The way that the deck tapers back, the colouring they've used, this sort of grey, metallic grey with the blacks here, the wide tyres. The, the deck thickness, you've got the lights around here, the swing arms, completely different. It looks a bit more aggressive, but sleek at the same time. So a very, very nice design that they've come up with here. It really does look like a premium scooter. Now, a, this scooter is only 500 watts. It's a 500 watt motor built for the urban sort of commuter market. So what you normally find with scooters with motors of that size is they'll be fairly basic. This is anything but basic especially as I've said when you look at it. It just looks like a premium scooter that they've spent money on in the right areas. Starting down here, we've just spoken about the motor. This is 500 watt. You can also get the dual motor version, which is 1000 watt, so 500 at the back, and then they add a 500 watt motor at the front. The single motor is supposed to go 25, 26 miles an hour, and the dual motor, 30, 31 miles an hour. We'll put that to the test, of course, but this model is the single motor version. So from the motor, you can see on the hub itself, we have a drum brake. Now, this has got front and rear drum brakes. Some people don't like drum brakes or they think they don't like them. They prefer disc brakes, hydraulic or mechanical. Apollo also like disc brakes, as do we, but what they've said is the massive majority of the feedback when they were talking about brakes from their customers was that maintenance was a real issue. Constantly having bent discs from dropping down curbs, things like that, constantly changing the pads. So what they've done is used a much more efficient braking type. So I've got a drum brake here. You'll see the lever there. We've got the lever down at the bottom. When it's pulled via a cable, these, shoes expand and touch the drum and that's what stops now the reason they're more efficient it's a much bigger surface area so you've got double pads effectively there so there's very little maintenance and when these do finally wear down you just open it up remove the shoes and put new shoes on it's very very straightforward now they don't work as efficiently as a larger disc because on a larger disc, obviously, it's a much bigger diameter, so it's going to have more stopping power. This is fairly small, so you've got to pull them hard for them to work. But maintenance-wise, which is what a lot of people are concerned about and which is what Apollo have listened to, dual drum brakes were the answer. So it's interesting that they've gone for that. So we're going to test those out as well, see what kind of stopping power that they do provide. But I really like the idea of a low-maintenance scooter, and that's what they've tried to do here. So on the outside of the brakes, you can see we've got the tires. Now on a lot of scooters of this power, or commuter urban type scooters, the tires are often eight between eight and 10 inches tall and sort of two inches wide. These are 2.7, so they're 10 by 2.7. That's a nice, wide, tall tire. So very comfortable, really good for grip, having that extra width. Also, they are an anti-puncture tire. So when you put slime often in a tire, they sort of have a layer of goo around the inside of the tire or the tire wall, 
So you can literally stick a nail or a screwdriver through it, pull it out and it seals itself. It's a really, really clever and again, fits in with that low maintenance aspect of what Apollo are trying to do. So above the tire are these fenders. Now, what's quite nice about the fenders they've used, they're a bit like the tire hugger fenders that Zero used to produce and other, uh, produce and other scooters. So they give this kind of cool look, rather than all being joined into the actual frame of the scooter, they sort of sit independently. We'll test how good they are and how much splash you actually get, but they look very, very good at covering the width and the back of the deck here. So not a lot of water is gonna come up. Integrated onto the fender is the rear light. So if I press the left hand button up here on the, on the um, handlebars, you can see the light comes on. I'll turn that off now. So when you press the brake, the brake light also comes on, so the same light. It's a really good safety feature, and most scooters have that now, but for a commuter, urban type scooter, super important. So from the fender, we come back to the dual shock. So we've got two spring shocks with dampeners at the back here, and then we've got a single spring shock at the front. Really nice addition to any scooter suspension, and they've got this triple suspension aspect on this scooter. What Apollo have also done is on every pivot point on the scooter, they've used a bearings, which obviously makes everything move a little bit more easily um, and stops it stiffening up and corroding. So that's also a nice feature that they've done. We'll now move to the back of the deck and then along. As you can see, we've got a nice handle here. That was a big thing that people were asking about when they're picking a scooter up, they wanted it to be easy. Now, because the battery is fairly large in this, it's gonna be of a certain weight. So when the stem folds down, you clip it on there. So you can either pick it like that or you can hold that handle, hold under here or even on the stem and lift the scooter up. So a nice feature. That also doubles as a footrest, which I'm sure we're gonna use when we go out. I like to ride with one foot forward and one foot back. Some people ride with them next to each other, but I like to have that support, especially when you're going over bumpy terrain, just gives you that bit more stability with one forward and one back. So that's a really nice feature. and makes it more comfortable when you're riding. So from the handle, we come down here and you can see this big reflector strip here. Now, this is another super addition. We've got indicators and they're not tiny little things. They're actually very large and very easy to see. You can also hear that they're beeping so you know when they're on. And on the dashboard itself, you can see the light flashing so you don't leave them on. Well, you know when they're on so you can turn them off if you need to and on whenever you need to. So a great safety feature there as well as the uh, rear brake as well with the brake light. Just a really important feature to have on any scooter in my opinion so that anyone in the dark or even if it's not dark can see what you're doing when you're in front of them. So from the indicators we're moving to the deck. Obviously it's fairly thick there's a big battery in here. What I really like about this scooter and we've said it already is the shape. It comes out here like the shoulders and then tapers right back. It's not thin and it's not too wide to be honest but it's just a really nice aesthetically pleasing shape sort of gives it the uh, feeling of like a speed, uh, aerodynamic, that kind of thing. It's just a really nice shape. We've got rubber matting on top of the deck. I personally really like that, an anti-slip rubber mat. So housed within the deck is the battery. It's a 15 amp power, 48 volt battery with 21700 cells. Those are higher uh, capacity cells than the 18650s they used to use. So this, they say, gives you up to 25 miles of range. I actually think it might give more than that, being that size battery, depending on how fast uh, you're riding and how aggressively, but we will see. So I, th I think they might've been a bit conservative with that estimate, but both, uh, the single motor and the dual motor are supposed to get around 25 miles of range. Okay, here at the front, you can see we have the charge port just there with a nice cover to keep it weather tight. Now, speaking of weather tight, this whole scooter has an IP55 rating. It's brilliant, especially for where we live over here in Europe. Uh, we get a lot of rain, but obviously anywhere you are, where there are puddles or um, where it rains a lot, it's such a useful feature to be able to have a water resistant scooter that you know isn't gonna let you down uh, when the weather turns bad. So once again, Apollo have added that um, where they used to have an IP54 on their other scooters, they've actually raised that to IP55, which is a much better water resistance rating. And you can see in our IP rating video what those uh, figures actually mean in greater depth. Coming out of the deck, see we've got the neck down here, some very neat welding going on around there. Again, love the color of the scooter, the black with the metallic gray, really gives it a uh, sort of futuristic vibe. Front swing arms, very similar to the back. We've got the fender and the tires the same. Obviously, we've already talked about the rear motor, but at the front, if you had the dual motor, you'd also have a motor there. So, now we come up the neck of the scooter, 
I'm gonna reposition myself over here just to show you how simple the folding mechanism is on the scooter. So literally, well, first of all, it feels very strong. So I should say, uh, sometimes with scooters, you can sort of hear that, you know, that kind of creak and you think, mm, is that stem gonna hold up? This feels very secure. I literally push this orange tab down here, pop it open, that folds back and down that comes. Now, with a lot of Apollos, that swings out. So when it's standing up, it acts as a bag carrier or a coat carrier. As it comes down, that comes down. This clip comes out and you just lock it in like so. Then you can lift it up. Very, very straightforward. The cables inside are covered with a, a nice protective cover here, so you're not worrying about snapping any cables. Inside here, you can see the mechanism's all very clean and tidy. So you literally undo that, pop that back down, lift it back up, and then literally with one finger, push it closed again. Really, really simple mechanism, especially for a urban commuter type scooter where you will be folding it up and down quite a lot. That is such a useful feature to have and a very, very strong, what looks like a very, very strong um, design that they've come up with here. Okay, so coming up the stem, You've got the Apollo branding here, either side. You've actually got Apollo's new logo as well on the front down there, which we'll show you with the camera in a second. You come up the stem, we've got the clip, as we said before. So this can act as a bag carrier or something like that. And also when it folds down, that's what locks the scooter into position. The cables coming out here are the brake cables. Everything else is housed in the stem, which is also a really nice feature. So you don't just have cables everywhere on this scooter. It's very neat, very tidy. Coming up, you've got the display. That shows which mode you're riding in, miles per hour, kilometers per hour, how far you've gone, your battery life, that kind of stuff. Uh, whether the lights are on or not. And then you come up to the handlebars. Now these are very nicely designed handlebars. They're, they've got this sweep that runs up. You've got really comfortable grips or what feel really comfortable at the moment. Uh, they look very futuristic like the rest of the scooter. Um, really nice integrated display there. The brake levers themselves are for the drum brakes. You can feel there's resistance, you're gonna to have to pull them quite hard. What Apollo have done here is they've also added an electric brake. So we have this regen brake here. So we use a thumb, push that down, and that's gonna assist the brake. And they think that's gonna actually be a, a very capable brake from what they've said to us. So we're gonna test that out as well, see how long it takes to stop just with that. And we'll also use everything to see how quickly the scooter brakes as well. Now, what Apollo have also done is they've made this app compatible. So within the app, you can change the degree of how much the regen brake kicks in or not from a scale of one to 10. You can also set the acceleration, how fast you want it to go, how much battery it's gonna be draining. You can see your total distance, you can see your analytics. It's a really nice feature having the app. They've got the little QR code scanner thing here. So you literally just put your phone on that and then it logs straight into the Apollo uh, app and then you link it up to your scooter. And then once you're linked up, you are the only person who can log onto that scooter. So it's a really nice safety feature as well. Really, really cool idea. So just going back to the handlebars here and the buttons, this side, we've got the right indicator. You'll see it on the screen, it's flashing and it's making a noise. This side, you've got the left indicator doing the same thing. When you click the power button, that scrolls through the mode. So you've got normal, eco, sport mode. And then also on this side, you've got a mode button as well, which turns the lights on and off, front and rear. All in all, a really, really nice looking scooter. Very excited to ride it. It's not a super powerful one, you know, so we're not expecting to be going 60 mile an hour, but just when you walk in and you see a load of scooters lined up, this one definitely stands out. Apollo are a company who are really forward thinking from, what, uh, from our experience. They're constantly trying to innovate, constantly trying to improve, and listening to their customers is such an important part of design. There aren't many companies that are doing this from what we know. So um, they're always asking for feedback. So well done to Apollo. You've got a great looking product. This really is a premium commuter scooter. This isn't like your normal, just you know, mass produced scooter. This really looks fantastic. So hopefully it rides as well as it looks and we will see. So we've come out on the new Apollo City. We're gonna test the top speed run. We're gonna do the range. We're gonna do braking test and we're gonna do acceleration test. I just wanted to show you one more time how nice this scooter looks. Apollo really have done well with the styling of this scooter. It's not like your normal, smaller 500 watt scooter mass produced. This has some really attractive design features as you can see, just the way the swing arms are made, tapering of the deck. It's a really, really high end 
but lower powered scooter. I think this is gonna be a really, really popular one. Now completed the speed run, we've moved on to the hill climb. Now the 350 didn't make it up this hill, 350 watt. We've got 500 watt, slightly more powerful battery, so I am hopeful, but it's a very steep hill. So, off we go. Still fairly flat at the moment. We're going about 12 mile an hour. So we're hitting the hill now. This is the steeper section. It's a very bumpy hill as well. very steep trying to avoid the potholes which is quite hard over here in the uk but they are everywhere so it's just starting to struggle now i'm about 90 kg with all of this stuff on so there and we've come to a stop so as you can see look down there that's a very steep hill so we didn't get all the way up but 500 watts has certainly got a decent amount of power there aren't many hills this steep unless you're living right on the countryside so um, I would say that this Apollo City is going to be able to handle pretty much anywhere you're going to want to travel, especially in urban environments. But remember, this comes in dual motor as well. So with the 1000 watt, you'll be shooting up. So freewheeling down the hill now, we're kind of at about 10, 12 miles per hour and picking up speed. I'm using the brakes here, just the right and the left, but we do have the electronic brake as well. So three different braking mechanisms. It feels very comfortable. I like having two levers uh, rather than just an electric brake. It feels much safer. The tires feel good. We've got the 10 inch wide tires on here. Anti-puncture, so they're a bit heavier. So they've got the goo inside them. It's not slime. It's like a very thick, well, I suppose sort of a congealed slime that goes all around the inside of the tire. But that makes the tires heavier, but actually very comfortable. The suspension's helping loads. We started over a big bump then and it took it pretty well. Obviously these are designed for urban environments, so you're not often gonna find areas which are this bumpy, but it's a very comfortable ride. And I really like the foot position at the back. It's nice, it's obviously a handle as well, but it's working as a nice foot rest. We're now up to about 20 miles an hour, so it's cruising nicely. Very comfortable scooter. So now we're gonna come onto the brake test. This has two drum brakes, front and back, and also has an electric brake. So we're gonna be going 15 mile an hour, which is the general legal speed across most countries of Europe, and hopefully we'll be in the UK, or somewhere around that very soon. Um, so we start braking there, 15 miles an hour, and then we've got a tape measure laid out along the ground there. I'm gonna see how long it takes to brake. Like I said, first we're gonna try with the drum brakes only, and then we're going to do the electric brake only, just to see what the difference is. Electric brake over here. Right, off we go. Okay, so that was just the front and rear drum brake. When we go over to the line there, you can see it's almost exactly on four meters. Felt like it stopped very well, no skid at all. Um, I quite like skidding sometimes, obviously when you're braking hard, that can be a bit dangerous, but yeah, no skid at all. So now we're gonna go back and try with the electric brake on its own. So we come over from the, you're just using the electric brake on its own. That is 11.9 meters. So nearly three times as long as um, just the two, the front and rear drum brake on their own. So that's the electric brake. By the way, the electric brake's turned up to the full. You can actually change the setting on that. So we're now gonna try with both brakes together. Okay, so that was both brakes, front and back. Um, drum brakes and the electric brake and it stopped almost exactly the same as where just the two front brakes on its own. So basically, if you're wanting to stop hard, use the front and rear levers. If you have time to stop and you're trying to regen, use that electric brake. It takes, well, a bit more than twice as long to stop, but if you've got the distance, you can see in front of you, use that and you're gonna be recharging the battery at the same time. Just coming back through the woods area now. Although it's a dry day today and the sun's shining, 
The ground's still pretty wet in areas, and we've got puddles and all sorts, but being an IP55 rated scooter, this should be able to handle that no problem at all, which is quite, um, gives you quite a good feeling knowing that you're not gonna break down or shouldn't break down in wet or damp conditions. So we're still out on a quest to break this scooter. We're taking it out in the rain. We're going through some quite big puddles. I wanna see if it splashes up all over me, if the fenders work properly, and also if it can handle these wet conditions. And it is pretty wet. You should be able to see from down there. There's water splashing up everywhere. It's not nice at all. But as we've said, when you're out on a scooter, commuting or whatever you're doing, you need it to be able to handle all weather conditions. It's handling this slope really well. It's not a really steep slope, but it's pretty steep. And it's accelerating up the hill, which is nice. Obviously on the really steep hills, it's not gonna be able to do that. But it does show that that 500 watt motor does have some bike. We've been going through all sorts of puddles now. We've been riding in the wet, I don't know, maybe 20, 25 minutes. The deck's covered in water, the display's covered in water, everything is still working as it should. Let's just check the back of my trousers, see if the fender's working. I can't see myself, but no, it doesn't feel wet. I've got no water at all, so the rear fender's working really well. Front, yeah, we've got a little bit on the front here and the bottom, nothing up higher than just the bottom of my shin. But as you can see there, it's splashing all over the place, it is stopping a lot of it. There's not much water around here. So a bit on the front, absolutely nothing on the back. So the rear fender's doing its job and the front is pretty much doing its job. Now, what we're gonna do is go back down the hill. I'm just gonna test the brakes in the wet to see how well that we stop. Okay, coming back down, it's soaking wet. I'm gonna get up to about 15 miles per hour. We're on a slope as well. Okay, we are at 13, 14, 15, and I'm putting the brakes on now. That's pretty good. I pulled them on that line back there. That one, you know, estimating around four, four and a half meters. You know, that's a very, very good braking in these wet conditions with the double drum brake. I didn't use the electric brake at all. So i um, pretty happy with that, to be honest. Right, let's keep going, see if we can actually make this thing die. So I don't think it's going to. An IP55 rating is a very good rating. It means it can handle more than just a little bit of mist. And that's the overall rating. So some aspects of this scooter will be higher than that. Some may be lower as well. But things like the display, maybe, you know, six or seven, we don't know. And what I like is a really good display rating because that is what's ham getting water hammered down on it all the time. As you can see there, it's soaked. But still working perfectly. And the grips are still very grippy, which is good. And the deck is really grippy, which is really important as well. The front suspension feels very comfortable. Uh, the rear's a bit harder, but still has quite a lot of give in it. God, there's loads of bugs around here all going through the front of the mask. You can tell springs here. We're going down onto a very gravelly section now. See how the wheels grip? They're nice and wide, these tires. So it shouldn't be a problem. There we go. And then onto a slight slope going up. A bit rattly on there. And off we go. It's very comfortable. The handlebar position is very nice and comfortable. It's wide enough. The grips are comfortable, making it quite a pleasurable ride. Right, we're coming over quite a big bump now. See how it handles this. Yeah, it's pretty good. So we've been out on the nice flat ground. It was a bit bumpy out there. It wasn't super smooth time out, but it was pretty hard and nice. Now we're gonna take it on a farm track. Loads of potholes, puddles, big ruts to see if we can um, put it for its paces. Hopefully not break it, but let's really see what it can do um, in a slightly off-road environment. Here we go. Oh, it's getting away from me. Okay, first impression's good. Go through those tractor tracks on purpose was quite bumpy. This is very flinty. I'm not worrying about the tires. They've got the anti-puncture protection in them, as we said earlier. Going about 16 miles an hour. The flints are bumpy. The front's very comfortable, like I said, but the rear a bit harder, but not uncomfortable. We're going on a slight uphill. My knees feel good. It's taking most of the... Uh, 
most of the pressure out of them, that suspension and the tyres, which is very nice. It's a fun scooter actually. For a 500 watt, it's very nippy. You can almost get a little wheel spin at the beginning, which is great fun for a low powered scooter, or a lower powered scooter, I should say. When the rules change, it's likely it's gonna be something like 500 watt or a 50 mile per hour limit. So these are the types of scooters that are going to become legal, it looks like. So if, you, if you're thinking about it like that, when you compare it to say the Xiaomi's and that sort of style, this is miles ahead, miles ahead of those types of scooters. Completely different offering. With the triple brakes, the styling, the folding mechanism, the IP rating, the upgraded tires, they've used drum brakes specially because they're lower maintenance. Disc brakes you can hit when you drop down curbs, things like that. You can warp the disc, the pads are gonna be changed much more regularly. Whereas obviously drum brakes are harder to maintain, but don't need anywhere near the same amount of time, uh, you know, regular maintenance as, as other types of brakes. They listen to the consumers. Apollo are very good at this. They put a big poll out, um, asked loads of questions to thousands of people. And this is the product of what they came back with. So bigger tires, better suspension, um, a carry handle included, pretty nippy dual motor option, drum brakes, what most people were asking for. And I never would have thought that, you know, I'm a sort of a staunch hydraulic brake guy, but maybe that's from the more powerful scooters. But um, it really, really is a very, very nice scooter to ride. And as I've been saying before, incredibly nice to look at. Another great feature about this scooter is the how clear the display is. It's got your miles per hour, it's got what gear you're in, it's got your battery life, what mode you're in, say gear. Um, very clear, but also you can use the app to change all that. So you can select um, your regenerative braking, your acceleration mode that you like, all from the apps, really easy to use. Um, you can also check all your diagnostics on there, how far you've gone, how fast you've gone, all that kind of stuff. It's a really nice feature that. Um, obviously it's only locked, uh, linked to you, so only you can use that. It's a really good safety feature as well for the scooter. Um, so just a, another cool feature there. And obviously as you can see on the handlebars here, we've got the indicators as well, which beep and flash when they're on, just letting you know that they're on and obviously anyone behind you. Just some cool features. It's just a very smart, nice scooter. So off the gravel path now onto the grass. Pretty bumpy grass this, not flat at all. Handling it well, you've got to lean right back, just let that front wheel take the bumps and back out onto the gravel again. Oi, there we go. You can skid it. <laughs> so you can skid it after I was saying that you can't skid it. Brakes grip really well. Let's give some pros and cons. First of all, as I keep saying, the look of this scooter is awesome. But I'll start with the negatives. The fender rattles the whole time, which is a little bit annoying. Oh, I think we can tighten that up actually. Okay, so that might not, might just be tightening, tightening up the screws along the top there, but it's a bit annoying when you go over bumpy ground. What else? It didn't make it all the way up the hill, 500 watt. I mean, we've never had a 500 watt scooter to make it up that hill. This is 23 kilos, it's got a big battery, 15 amp hour, so the range is very, very long, makes it heavier. I'm 90 kg with all the gear on. Could have made a difference. It did make it over halfway though. So it's gone further than any other 500 watt motor scooter that we have tested on that hill, but didn't make it up. So rattly fender, that, anything else? Um, I thought I wasn't gonna like the brakes. I actually really liked them. Um, top speed, you know, we're getting like 32 mile out, an hour out of this thing. The range, so we got 26 miles range on our first go. Now. I think you can probably get more than that because we were doing speed tests, we were do riding around doing all sorts of like silly accelerations and things like that. So if you're really gonna cruise, you might be able to break the 30 mile barrier um, on that battery, but 26 miles on the range test. We did the acceleration test. As you can see, I mean, it's not a scooter that's ever gonna go super quick. This is the single motored version, but the results are there. The dual motor, they think is gonna break 40 miles an hour, will, remains to be seen. It's only gonna be a thousand watt. Uh, we'll test it as soon as it comes out. I really liked the riding position. Foot back, that nice swept up board there on the deck. 
handlebars were very comfortable. The grips were very comfortable. That sort of ergonomic sweep in the handlebars and also it's uh, aesthetically pleasing as well. The brakes were so much better than I thought they were going to be. Um, I'm like, you know, hydraulic or nothing or semi-hydraulic. But for the scooter that, you know, is a 30 mile an hour max scooter, those brakes were more than capable. So from 15 mile an hour, we did the brake test, four meter stop, you know, that's very good. And really, if you're in urban areas, anywhere around Europe or the rest of the world, you're not gonna be riding much faster than that, or shouldn't be anyway, by the, uh, the local laws. Um, suspension, so most scooters in this bracket, that sort of 500 watt, may have some suspension, but it's often very basic. This with the springs, I was able to go over very, very bumpy ground. As you can see in there, we've covered it all in dust. We've been going over tracks all day, went through loads of puddles as well. We haven't had any issues with the water getting in. Um, the indicators obviously work well, that's a nice feature. The electric brake was really good. So when I know that I don't need to stop really quickly, you just press down on the electric brake. It takes two or three times longer to stop, but it does stop you and regens that battery again. So you're saving um, your battery power and, and obviously increasing it in some cases. I really can't wait to try out the dual motor version. I think it's gonna be very, very nippy and, and fun. Obviously we normally test or often test very powerful scooters here. So it's, um, it's never gonna be in that bracket, but looks wise in the bracket it's in, I, I don't know what to even compare it to. It's so nice. I mean, come and see for yourselves, come down to the shop um, and have a go for yourself as well. It's very hard to explain on the camera sort of how nice this actually is, the way they've designed it, the locking mechanism. They've even sort of um, changed the logo a little bit, so they've got a bit more, more futuristic there. It's a very, very well-built scooter. Well done to Apollo. Um, obviously, they've been innovating for a while. This is one of their very own models, so it's not an OEM scooter. This is their own model that they've been designing for, you know, however long. And um, listen to the customers and what they've produced is fantastic. Like I said, come and try out for yourself. If you want any more information on this or on any of the other products that we sell uh, or review, give us a call, give us a live chat, send us an email, go to the website, www.rideandglide.co.uk. I've already said come down. Please like the video, ask a question down below if you like, subscribe to the channel. We're always putting out content. And once again, thank you for watching and we will see you next time.